These three guys are household names in the game. They've combined for over 60 wins, a bunch of majors, and have won over $200 million playing the game we all love. Today, they're going to help us rectify 10 of the most common downswing myths we hear from golfers. We get sent a lot of training aids to try out, and for us, they've got to be three things, right? Yep. They've got to be simple to use, has to be, has to provide good feedback, reliable feedback, and then it has to force you to do the work. We don't like training aids that do the work for you because, you know, the research shows that you're really not learning the skill I'm just trying to show you. What we've got here in our hands is a divot board, and this kind of hits all three. One, it's very simple to use. Two, it provides incredible feedback. You can see right there, your club comes through so-called ball there, a little yellow spot. It's gonna show you exactly how it did that. And then this forces you to make the correction of putting the club on the ball in the right places with the right path. Heel toe, toe to heel, this forces you to do all of that. Now, if you wanna find out more about this, how we use it, how we recommend you use it, and what it's gonna do for your golf game, just click on the iCard above in the top right, top left-hand corner of this yeah. video. It'll take you to our full analysis of this training aid, show you exactly how we use it, and show you why we love it. Our first player has the longest backswing of the group. He has high hands, steep shoulders, and a trademark bowed left wrist. The next player here in the middle has a more compact swing, doesn't get his hands nearly as high, and has a classic flat left wrist here at the top. And here in the end, we've got a player with a crazy amount of rotation. He's got fairly normal hand height and has a neutral left wrist here at the top, which is just a few degrees of cup and also the most common out on tour. It should come as no surprise that good players have a variety of wrist angles at the tops of their swings. But what might come as a surprise is how those wrist angles may or may not affect the quality of your downswings. So we've got three very different looking golfers, three very different looking swings, and three different wrist angles and face angles here at the top. Or are they? To really see how the wrist and face angles compare, we need to compare those angles to each player's swing pass. And to do that, we need to make a couple of camera adjustments. Here's the typical above view you've seen in some of our previous videos. Because the club is marked and calibrated in a number of key locations along its length, Gears allows us to see with incredible detail how the grip, shaft, and club face move at every point during the swing. It also tracks the club's sweet spot from address to finish. The yellow arrow we're putting here on the screen is the club face angle. That's the line that extends out from the leaning edge of the club. The red arrow extends out 90 degrees from the club's sweet spot. Think of those magnetic pointers that clip to the front of your face. This is the loft angle. If a laser pointed straight out from your club face, this is where it would point. And the green line is the path their sweet spot takes to the golf ball. From here, you can kind of get a sense for how the face relates to the path. But to really get an accurate view, we need to adjust the camera so the face and loft are perpendicular to one another. And this is that view for our bowed golfer. Now you can truly see the effect his wrist angle has on his face angle relative to his club path. As you can see here, this great player's extremely bowed left wrist and closed looking face is actually 88 degrees open to his club path. Let us know in the comments below if you were shocked to see this for the first time like we were. And here's the view for our flat wristed pro. Quite a different looking wrist and club face, but very similar compared to his swing path. His face is 87 degrees open here at the top of his swing. And lastly, looking at our neutral wristed pro, he had the most cup in his wrist and a club face that looked the most open but his face is actually the least amount open, being 86 degrees open to his club path. Practically speaking, your club face is gonna open roughly 90 degrees to the top of your swing. This is why we don't like to see golfers try to keep the club face looking at the ball once they get to shaft parallel in the takeaway, because it's gonna open and open a lot. And trying to keep that from happening creates some wonky body and arm movements the longer you try to stave off the inevitable. And for reference, this is what the club would look like if you kept it square to the path all the way to the top. Give this a try next time you have a club in your hand and you'll know what we mean by wonky body and arm movements. And quickly before we move on, here are the body turn numbers for each guy. We'll talk a lot more about these in a few minutes, but we wanted you to see where each player was starting their downswing rotation from. 
Trying to avoid lifting the arms in the backswing is something we really don't ever see with pros, but it's something we often see AMs trying to pull off. One of our favorite uses of AMG 3D is its ability to take a player's measured movements and isolate those movements from everything else going on in the swing. This is super critical to be able to do because there's so many things continuously tilting, turning, raising, and lowering that it's not accurately possible at all to isolate these individual segments and see how they move by looking at videos or stills. But being able to see how these isolated segments move really can have a massive impact on what you try to do in your golf swing. What you're seeing here is a mirrored image of our bowed golfer at address. These are the exact measured positions of his right arm on the right and his left arm here on the left. And we're gonna stand him up without moving these angles at all. From here, we're gonna isolate his arm lifts and elbow bends from all the turning, tilting, racing, and lowering that's going on in the rest of his body. This is his independent arm lifts relative to his chest. From address to the top, he has 29 degrees of right arm flexion or his right arm lifts 29 degrees. He starts with 14 degrees of elbow bend, adds 85 to that to get to 99 here at the top. His left arm elevates a whopping 85 degrees. This is a lot and outside of the normal range we typically see. Along with his extremely bowed left wrist, we'd also call this move an outlier. And looking at his left elbow, it started at three degrees and moved to 12 degrees of bend. As we look at our flat golfer, you're gonna see movements more in a normal range of what we typically see. He lifts his right arm 24 degrees while bending his elbow to 77 degrees. His left lifts 65 degrees with nine degrees of elbow bend. And now see if you can spot the outlier moves here with our neutral player. If you said right arm, you're dead on the money. His right arm lifts 49 degrees because he's only bending his right elbow 56 degrees. This combination is what allows him to achieve massive width in his swing and a big reason why he's one of the longest hitters on tour despite being a fairly small guy. His left arm lifts 75 degrees, high end for sure, but still well short of our bodes 85 degrees. He also bends his left elbow nine degrees at the top like our flat golfer. Now let's pick up our guys here at shaft parallel in the downswing, which is the start of the delivery phase. From down the line, they all look somewhat like they have similar face angles with flat and neutral looking very similar. But let's see how they oriented their faces relative to the paths, which is what really matters. Bode's face is still 43 degrees open to his path. And this is mind blowing to golfers when we show this to them in lessons because of who this player is and what's commonly thought of being associated with a very bowed left wrist. Now given the stats we mentioned at the start, this player gets a lot of TV time because he's in contention a lot. It's hard to see a telecast without at least one commentator saying something like, what makes this player so good is his ability to get the face square here early and then just turn through the ball. Or probably my personal favorite, if this player didn't turn so hard through impact, he'd hit every ball left because his bowed wrist has the club face closed here at the start of his delivery. Now keep in mind, he started at the top 88 degrees open to his path. His entire downswing from top to impact lasts just 286 milliseconds. 87% of that time was spent getting to here. So in the first 87% of his downswing, he closed his club face 51%. And if you subscribe to conventional bowed wrist thinking, he must have one hell of a body opening move to close his club face the remaining 43 degrees in just 36 milliseconds. And on that note, here is where his body rotation is at this point in the swing. From the top to here, his shoulders have opened 100 degrees with his hips opening 73 degrees in that first 87% of his downswing. He's lost just 15 degrees of the left wrist set he had at the top while his right arm has straightened 42 degrees. Now looking at our flat pro, his face is still 49 degrees open to his path here at shaft parallel. He spent 83% of his downswing and 44% of his face squaring being done by the time he's gotten here. And here are his corresponding rotation numbers. His shoulders have opened 79 while his hips have opened 57. He's also lost 15 degrees of wrist set while his elbow is straightened 57 degrees. Even though our neutral pro started with slightly less of an open face at the top, he's closed his face the least on his way to the start of his delivery here. His face is open 50 degrees to his path. It's taken him 86% of the downswing to close his face 42% of its way to square. 
As we look at his body numbers, you can see that his ability to rotate and rotate fast is another of his outliers. Most humans, including tour pros, can't be where he was at the top, but even if they could, most likely wouldn't be where he is here at shaft parallel. He's opened his shoulders 128 degrees from the top with his hips opening 70 degrees. He's lost 24 degrees of his wrist set while his elbow is straightened 33 degrees. For every low row or low closure pro who we can find that hits it on a string, we can find several high roll and high closure players who are just as statistically accurate, if not more so. And for every high roll or closure amateur we've captured who hits it all over the place, we can show you several low roll and closure ams who also hit it everywhere. What you are doing on the grip end is not what's happening on the club hand end. Not when the club's moving fast, not at the same time, and not at the same rate. Grip roll is very much like your tempo. How far apart your eyes are or how big your ears are. It's going to be unique to you. And what fits you the best might not look the best on somebody else. These are the grip roll rates of each of our players here at Shaft Parallel. These are the real-time degrees covered in one second of time as it's measured. They're all different. They're all rolling really fast, especially considering this is just to cover roughly 50% of the face squaring that's happened so far. And now for the moment of truth or moments of truth in our case. In the 36 milliseconds from delivery to impact, our Bodris Pro opened his pelvis and shoulders just another 12 degrees. To get back to square, his face needed to close 43 degrees. Do you think we can agree that he doesn't square his face with body rotation? In those same 36 milliseconds, he loses another 31 degrees of lag angle or loss of wrist set, and his elbow is also straightened another 26 degrees. Now this is a lot of forearm, elbow, and wrist movement for someone who's often thought of as just delivering the club by turning his body. While important for sure, it's his body that's contributing the least to squaring his face during his delivery phase. And then looking at his isolated arm movements, you can see the corresponding rapid lowering of his arms relative to his chest, especially his left arm. At impact, the arms will always be just above where they started at address. But if there's one thing we can be certain of, his arms do not stay up. The old adage of what goes up must come down is certainly true in the golf swing. It's also worth pointing out that the downward movement of his grip and hands is accelerating faster than the turning of any of his body segments within the first few frames of his downswing. And the amount the arm lowers or the speed that they lower is just really a matter of just reading a number. It's like looking at a tape measure or speedometer, neither of which require interpretation. And looking at the flat golfer, you can see he got his shoulders another 20 degrees open compared to his hips, which increased by another 10 degrees. His right elbow straightened another 13 degrees while he lost another 42 degrees of his wrist set. Considering he needed 44 degrees to square his face, it's also safe to say he doesn't rely on body rotation either. And as we mentioned earlier, he didn't lift his arms as much as our Bode Pro did but he has the same lowering pattern and acceleration profile, arriving at impact here just slightly higher than where he started. Now let's look at the fastest and biggest rotator of the three. We can see he added 21 degrees to his shoulders with 15 degrees added to his hips. He lost another 31 degrees from his wrist set along with another 11 degrees of his right arm straightening. Remember, he had to cover the most ground with his face being open 50 degrees to his path. And even though this player's superpower is his ability to rotate, he still doesn't turn enough in 34 milliseconds to square his face with rotation. Nothing really different happening in his arms here either. They lower a bunch and do so very quickly right from the top. So let's wrap this up by looking at each player when they're right here at shaft parallel post impact. And what you perceive should be happening here will without a doubt have a big impact on what happens at your impact. Bode has swiveled his face 54 degrees closed to his path. Here's a look from underneath at his closing rate from shaft parallel to shaft parallel. He closes his face 103 degrees in 96 milliseconds. Now that's over a degree per millisecond or 1073 degrees per second. At the last 12 inches before impact, 
Notice he has a 120% increase in grip roll leading into impact. And this really shows the violently ballistic nature of the release, even if it looks like he's making a passive turn through the ball. Now let's take a look at Flat's release. He's closed his face 85 degrees to his path here at shaft parallel post impact. Looking at his closing timeline, you can see that he covered a whopping 128 degrees in 104 milliseconds. That's closing the face from shaft parallel to shaft parallel at a rate of 1,230 degrees per second. That's definitely a higher closing rate than Bode, but take a look at his grip roll that 12 inches before impact. His 120% increase nearly identically matches to what we saw with Bode. Again, we see neutral operating kind of in the middle of the first two. His face closes 113 degrees between our two benchmarks, which requires a closing rate of 1202 degrees per second. And just like the first two, he boosts his grip roll coming into impact by 120%. Pretty amazing that these three very different golf swings all jack up their grip roll exactly the same just one foot before impact. More proof that how things look can be quite deceiving. Whether you're looking at this from the low end at over 1,000 degrees per second or at the high end at over 1,200 degrees per second, one thing is for sure, the face is releasing at a blistering rate through impact. So what does all this mean for you? All of our videos are made to either answer the questions we get asked a lot or to discuss the trends we see in our lessons from players all around the world. We see these myths on a daily basis. So we wanted to contrast that with some of these objective starting points for the things that you're trying to do in your downswing. Rotation is vital. With a capital V, it's a vital part of a good golf swing, but overemphasizing rotation to the point it starts hurting how you move your arms and hands is not going to help your swing. That's also no different than overusing your arms and hands at the expense of being able to turn effectively. There needs to be a good balance between the two. Body movements are big and easier to notice on video and get a lot of attention because of it. But as you saw here, that doesn't mean there's not a lot going on at the same time with the harder to see arm and hand movements. And just like fashion, swing trends are always coming in and out of style. Right now, the trend is all rotation all the time. The secret, however, is that your best golf is going to be played in the middle of those two extremes. By being able to objectively see what great players do, it's easy to see that these great swings are neither body nor arms dominated. They take advantage of both, and you should too. So let us know in the comment sections below if you're surprised at anything you saw today. And especially let us know if you're struggling in any of these areas. We'll be happy to make a video to help you work on it. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.